Hello, this is Joseph Zoldan. Today's video is about our Judeo-Christian pagan heritage. Many times in school we're taught about the Judeo-Christian heritage, but I hold that's incomplete, and that's what we'll discuss today. As you see, I have some books for sale. I hope you like my video, and if you do, I hope you like some of my books. You'll see a link down below, which will take you directly to my bookstore. Also, if you want, you can buy me a coffee. The link for that is down below also. First, we have to define two terms, democracy and republic. Strictly speaking, a republic is a government entity where people are chosen by voters to make the decisions on behalf of the community, the state, the country. A democracy is where people vote directly on the issues. And we really are both. We have on the state and local side many initiatives and referendums in many states where the people will decide things like budgets, changes to the state constitution, various public questions. But most of our decisions are made by elected representatives, and so we are mostly a republic. But we do have both elements. So the Judeo-Christian heritage is based on the Bible. And in the Bible are the Ten Commandments. We've had people who put up the Ten Commandments in places like courthouses, and we're told you can't do that. That's against the First Amendment. That's preaching religion. And the counter argument is it honors our Judeo-Christian heritage. I've examined the Ten Commandments at great length many times, and I can only find four of the Ten Commandments have anything whatsoever with anything that will happen in the United States courtroom, federal, state, or local. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. The fourth one is not an offense, but a process. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, such as you are a witness in court, and you take the oath to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Those four and no more. The remainder are moral teachings and religious teachings, and we do not have an official religion in the United States. We could set up that exhibit to have the Ten Commandments, the Twelve Tables of Roman Law, the Code of Hammurabi, and other historic documents that influence the law of today. That could be pretty crowded, and I have a solution for that at the very end. But not just the Ten Commandments by themselves, because they're mostly about religion, 60%. Religion and ethics, anyway. So what is the history that the Bible tells us? Well, Moses was anointed by God as the spiritual leader of the Jews, and he became the civic leader. So there wasn't a separation between religion and government. Likewise, Solomon, Saul, David. In the New Testament, Israel is governed by the Roman Empire as an occupied territory, but the Jewish government under that is governed by the Sanhedrin, which is a group of Jewish rabbis. And they are handling the religious decisions, as if you will, the Supreme Court and arbiter of religious questions, as well as running the civic matters of Israel subject to approval by the Roman government because they were always under the Roman government. But none of that has anything to do with democracy, has nothing to do with being a republic. In the Acts of the Apostles, we're down to 11 apostles. There were 12 appointed by Jesus. Judas Iscariot committed suicide. The apostles figured, well, if Jesus wanted the 12 apostles, we should still have 12. But Jesus is not here to appoint someone to fill that missing chair. So they decided between Barsabbas and Matthias. Matthias won. They did not vote. They cast lots, the Bible says. Now, we don't know if that means they threw dice or if it means that uh, they put two names in a hat and pulled one out of the hat. But it does say they cast lots. They felt they were not leaving it to chance, but rather that God would govern the outcome so the person that God wanted as the replacement apostle would be the one that would be chosen by casting the lots. And we still don't have democracy. So where does democracy come from? It comes from the pagan world. Athens. Athens was both a democracy and a republic. The citizens of Athens, the people who were not slaves, who were citizens, and the men, not the women, but at least it's a start, get together and they vote for people to run the city-state for a period of time, and they also vote on the major issues directly. So, so they're acting as both a democracy and as a republic. The Roman Republic lasted for 500 years before the empire and also had representative government. So our democracy, our republic, our concepts of those 
come from the pagan world, not from the Judeo-Christian heritage of the Bible. Now, if you visit the House of Representatives, you will see what we call a frieze, F-R-I-E-Z-E, -E, which is a border around the top of the House chamber. There are 23 portraits there. One of them was Moses, who was Jewish and religious leader, but he was also a lawgiver and gave the Ten Commandments to his people. So he is up there as an important lawgiver in history. Also, George Mason, who is an Episcopalian, who is one of our founders, and Thomas Jefferson, definitely one of our founders, who is a deist, not a Christian. Pope Gregory IX was a Christian. Suleiman the Magnificent was a Muslim. And Hammurabi was a pagan. So all of these different influences, regardless of what religion somebody held, influence our law of today in the Western world. That's why the 23 individuals are honored there. So if you go to the House of Representatives, don't miss looking at the portraits up by the ceiling. Now my solution to the problem, of what are we going to do about the display in the middle of the courthouse? We found that the Ten Commandments are more about religion and morals than they are about law and what is being done in the courthouse. We can add in some of the monuments and other sources of law, but it might get crowded and difficult to walk from the front door to the elevator. So I have an easy solution for that. Put up one monument. The monument will have on it a copy of the United States Constitution which definitely is a legal document that has a lot to do with what is going on in that courthouse, be it the Supreme Court or the local traffic court. I hope you liked today's video. More are coming. We'll have one up very shortly about are we a Christian nation, which I hope you'll like. In the meantime, you guys have a terrific day. Thanks for joining me today.